what is wrong with this baby. And I really thought he was going to die. He was afraid to find out just what it was. It needs to come. It needs to come out as soon as, soon as it can. My whole world just collapsed at that moment. I think my husband and I cried all night long. Next, three medical mysteries that defied the experts. For three years, Mary and Rich Jordan felt com completely helpless as they watched their young son's unquenchable thirst slowly destroy him and their family. We'd seen so many dogs by then, and they all told us, fine. And I wanted to believe that. Liz, Liz Holzemer wanted desperately to have me, but while trying to create a new life, she almost lost her own. I was, I was like a walking mom. I really, really began to feel there's a missing piece to this puzzle, and I have to find it. Jerry O'Meara suffered in silence for years of embarrassing symptoms, but when his gin started to deter deteriorate, it was too much for him to bear alone. I couldn't take it anymore. I wanted my eyes back again. When illness strikes, we look to the doctors to give us answers. But what if they can't? For these unlucky patients, diagnosis is a mystery. Mary and Jordan's daughter was four when they decided to expand the family and adopt newborn fraternal twin boys. The baby were born and placed in her arms, and I can't explain how it felt. It, felt. it was amazing. Joey was actually larger of the two. He, he was seven pounds. Patrick was uh, six pounds and two ounces, I think. What, what you picture in your mind of a big baby, you know, they had, you know, they had the roles of had little tiny sumo wrestlers, you know, they're just, you know, tanks. But despite their physical similarities, the twins begin to exhibit very different personalities. Patrick was quiet, just kind of went with the flow. Joey, even from birth, would buy a lot. Joe wanted food, you know, he wanted his bottle. He wanted to be fed right away. He would just suck on the, on the bottle, and then, you know, you have to pop it out of his, of his mouth and get him to breathe for a second, you know, and he would just go, you know, and then he'd grab the bottle again and stuff it put back in his mouth. And he'd finish the bottle within a couple of minutes, and then he'd just pro projectile it. You would just drape yourself with blankets because you knew... The minute you fed him, he was going to vomit all over you. The boy's pediatrician tells them not to worry. Joey's still eating, gaining weight, and seems healthy. But as this time goes by, he gets worse. He always cried at night, and it got really annoying, and it kept everyone up. And he was always thirsty and always hungry. There were, were nights that I'd have to pull Joey's crib out into another room so that Patrick can sleep because Patrick was sleeping through the night, and I didn't want Joey to wake up, pack up Patrick. He would make a big racket that Patrick. Patrick. Patrick is figuring, well, while I'm awake, I might as well have something to eat, too. Uh, so we would both end up sitting there, and we'd be, we'd be feeding them at the same time. And whoever had Joe first, you know, they, you know, they would have to deal with the throw-up, but they would get to go back to bed quicker than the other one. Joey's appetite is a little strange, but in all other respects, he seems normal. Everything about him was normal. As the first year was going on, he'd roll over when he was supposed to roll over. He'd babble when he was supposed to babble. He crawled when he was supposed to crawl. But I knew something isn't right, but I couldn't put my hand on it. Gradually, Mary began to realize that it isn't just the amount of liquid going into Joey's body that's astounding. We would have to change his diaper at least every two hours. A lot of times, I put a fresh diaper on him, and as I'm taping it up, pee, pee. And one time of peeing would fill the diaper. And we would, we would weigh him, and I kept a dart, you know? How many, many ounces is that diaper, you know? Wow, record. Kind of bizarre behavior, but we were being driven to extremes because the situation wasn't getting any better. It was actually getting, getting worse. When the twins are six months old, Mary takes the boys to a new pediatrician. But he doesn't think Joey's odd symptoms are anything out of the out of the ordinary. On the contrary, the doctor tells Mary that she may be the one with the problem. I went in and I said, he won't, won't go to bed without a bottle. Well, don't give him the bottle. Let him cry himself to sleep. So, so I tried to put him to bed without the bottle. And he screamed, and he screamed, and he screamed. I'm surprised neighbors, his neighbors didn't come knocking on the door to see what is wrong with this baby because you've never heard anything so loud, so horrible. 
and the do doctors were saying that I needed to become tougher and let him do it, but I couldn't, couldn't. I just, I gave in and gave him the bottle. I think a lot of the doctors thought Mary was nuts. This woman comes in, she's distraught, she's obviously, you know, at the end of her rope, she's complaining about a child that pees, pees too much and drinks too much and throws up. You know, come lady, just relax, take care of your kids. For, for two years, he has always eaten more and been bigger than Patrick. But suddenly, that pattern begins to change dramatically. All of a sudden, we noticed that Patrick was out growing Joey. Patrick was the linebacker. And Joey was the petite one. Joey was getting Patrick's hand-me-downs. He, he stopped grow completely about age two. Uh, but again, the doctors would say, hey, you know, sometimes that happens. Kids have growth spurts. So he's just, just at the end of a growth spurt. We'd seen so many dogs by then. And they all told us he was fine. Even when he stopped growing, they said he was fine. And I wanted to leave that. Over the next several months, Mary and Rich begin to notice another odd behavior. He was very, very active. But he'd rather do things phase. indoors did not like to be out in bright sunlight that much without sunglasses. We'd go through, go through Batman glasses and Teletubby sunglasses and Barney sunglasses. I thought he wanted a ten tension because I was little and I wanted a ten and I thought he was trying to steal it from me. And, and he would lick the back of his hand and then wipe his eyes when we thought he was going to get moisture in his eyes. Despite this peculiar reaction, Joey doesn't seem to be in any pain and his vision checks out fine. And so we just figured he was overly sensitive to the light, uh, and his eyes were dry out because, you know, there was just dry air. The twins graduate from baby food and bottles, but jo Joey's taste in grown-up food seems a little bizarre. Where most kids want candy, Joey wanted to eat salt. And we noticed he'd add salt to everything. No matter what it was, he'd put salt on it. My sons would look at him and say, Ma, what is he doing? He's already salty enough. And we would all sit there and just kind of go, that's really disgusting. But he loved it. I didn't think it was hugely odd. I thought maybe he had some bad had taste buds or something. just didn't get the idea or he liked the flavor of salt. And if he did get the salt, he'd scream or cry. So we'd give in and kind of let him eat what he wanted to eat. The twins are now two and a half. The similarity ends there. Patrick has been sleeping through the night for months, months, while Joey is up three and four times a night screaming for water. Problems are beginning to take a toll on the Jordans' lives. Got to the point where we were both totally exhausted. My husband and I were trying to take turns so that we'd at least get three to four hours sleep between us. I don't think she got more sleep for years. And we kept going on the way we were. At two and a half, we were still up every hour or two taking care of him like he was a newborn baby. But nobody could tell us why. For three years, Mary and Rich Jordan have been dealing with their son Joey's bizarre symptoms. An unquenchable thirst, projectile vom vomiting, excessive urination, intense craving for salt. All along, the doctors have told them that he falls within the range of normal. Not satisfied, Mary, J Mary Jordan takes Joey to yet another pediatrician, Dr. Michelle Ernst. She was young um, and friendly. We went through the history of Joey, and she listened to me and didn't say, it's your fault. Mary's manner was one of a concerned mom. She, she knew something was definitely wrong with her son. When he was, was in the exam room, but for a limited time, it was 15 or 20 minutes that I was with him, he had four cups of water um, in that small amount of time and got kind of antsy if his mom didn't give him water. And I thought, that's, that's kind of peculiar. So it made me think something's probably not, not right here. She then did a physical and then asked, has Joey ever been tested for diabetes? And I said, no, he's never been tested for anything. And Dr. Ernst then said, that's the first thing we're gonna do because excessive water, water drinking is a sign of diabetes. Just the quick urine test that I did showed that there was potentially a problem. 
The urinalysis shows that Joey doesn't have juvenile di diabetes, does have abnormally high levels of, sh of sugar and protein in his urine, an indication that there's something wrong with his kidneys. I knew something was wrong with my child, and she's finally saying there's something wrong with my child. Dr. Ernst refers them to pediatric kidney specialist Dr. Shel Sheldon Orloff. Investigate. The most striking thing I remember about him and his family is that he came with his twin brother, and he and his twin brother are markedly different in size. It was like Mutt and Jeff. Dr. Orloff came in, and he looked at Joey and, and, and talked to Joey. He's a very reassuring doctor. He's very calm. He knows what he's talking about. It felt really good to have an expert looking at him, because then we thought, we're almost to res resolution now. After hearing the of Joey's symptoms and the toll it's, it's taking on the family, the first step Dr. Orloff takes is to prescribe a medication to treat Joey's excessive urination. That in and of itself was a godsend. If we could get five hours of sleep a night, it's just like, yahoo. I wanted to try and show, show them that we could make their life a little bit better. And at the same time, I introduced this concept that he may have something else going on. And every, everything seemed to be going great until he started ultrasounding the kidneys. And in one of the ultrasounds, they noticed that something was wrong with the kidneys. We therefore proceeded with a kidney biopsy in which we take a small part of the kidney out, look at it under a microscope, and, and try and make a substantive diagnosis. Just before we brought in for the kidney biopsy, we thought he's losing his kidneys. We didn't know, know what was going on. You filter about 40 gallons of water out of your out of your bloodstream every day through the filtering apparatus of the kidney. His laboratory tests showed signs of filtering not working correctly. The biopsy shows that Joey, Joey's kidneys, absorbing nutrients and filtering out to toxins, aren't, aren't. Everything is just passing right through them. This is a condition known as Fanconi's syndrome. Fanconi's is usually a diagnosis in and of itself, but rather an, in an indicator of a nut more serious disease. I, I was a little concerned, and then I was relieved at the same time, because now, now they clearly knew at the microscopic level, you know, what the problem was, or at least, or at least I thought they did. did. How it was important to try and look at all the possible causes for Fanconi's syndrome. One of the major organs that Aside from the, from the kidney, which seems to be the good organ of this disease, is the eye. So I sent him to the ophthalmologist. We were frightened. Does it mean he's going to go blind? So then we were dealing kidneys and blindness. I didn't know. The head of ophthalmology looked in Joey's eyes and within a few minutes said, Joey has crystals in his eyes. And I go, he has what? <laughs> He has crystals in his eyes. The ophthalmologist just immediately sends Mary back to Dr. Orloff. And Dr. Orloff had its right in and proceeded to say, your son has cystinosis, this is what it is, this is what we have to do for him. Cystinosis is a rare genetic disease in which the amino acid cysteine wreaks ha havoc on the body. In a healthy person, cysteine is gradually absorbed by the kidney. But with cystinosis, the cysteine builds up and forms crystals, which can lodge in cells and damage tissue. This is inherited. Um, it's genetic. It, it comes from a recessive characteristic in the two parents. The crystals tend to gravitate to the eyes, which causes a sensitivity to the light. And the buildup of cysteine kidneys means that they can no longer absorb nutrients or water. This leads to excessive urination, which in turn leads to dehydration, low potassium, and a seemingly unquenchable thirst. The inability to absorb essential nutrients can also result in stunted growth, kidney failure, and ultimately death. So these ch children typically will crave salt water to a point that they won't drink almost anything else, and to the point of even keeping them from eating to get the adequate calories they need to grow. I was so scared. I went home, went on the internet, and the information was very, very frightening. Talking about kidney transplants, they talked about people dying at a young age, and I cried. I think my husband and I cried all night long. 
I remember when my sister told me what it was. I was scared. She didn't know what the future was going to hold for him. Granted, it was not a good, happy diagnosis. At least we know what it is, and we know what we can do to make it better, or at least to make it less damaging than what it was. There is no cure for cystinosis, but there are medications that can treat the symptoms and help prolong life. Dr. Orloff starts, starts Joey on a drug to reduce the cystine content in his body, eye drops to remove cystine crystals in his eyes, and a growth hormone to help him catch up. Before we understood the disease and could replace the missing chemicals, the children would die within several evil years. Now that we have the ability to treat the disease, they're living a much longer, healthier, and productive life. The Jordans are lucky. Cystinosis is a difficult diagnosis to come by. There are less than 2,000 people in the world with cystinosis. And that's not the first thing that jumps up at a doctor, because most doctors have, have never heard of it. Dr. Ernst was willing to go in and find out what was wrong. And it was our luck to find Dr. Orloff, who ha had treated cystonic children before. You know, we're taught in medical school, common things are common. You usually think of common things. So you have to be thinking outside the box to get to a, get to a rare diagnosis. Thanks to proper treatment, today, Joey is thriving. Between the various pills and these eye drops, which he only gets up once or twice a night now, and my son, who would not even go outside in the daylight because his eyes hurt, is now swimming in swimming pools and playing soccer and baseball and everything else. You need to take medicine since for the rest of life different types depending on where he is and his disease progression and that eventually he will need, he will need to have a key transplant. Saying all that, he manages to do pretty well with life. Joey is one of the toughest boys I've ever met. Joey will do anything to just get on your nerves. He's like every other little brother. Finally, the Jordan Snites have come to an end. And through it all, Mary and Rich have learned a valuable lesson. You, you know something is wrong, you need to push forward and then work on that. Go to as many doctors as you need to go to to get the diagnosis. And, and don't take no for an insert.